Last week I put up a short form video on how I made the smoothing planes and I've got this one all ready to go out to Lee. I hope he really likes it. Uh, but I really wanted to do a longer format video for going into a little bit more detail into how I made these. I've had a lot of people asking about them um, and wanting to know if I can make them for them. Uh, but to be honest, I spent about 60 hours between these two planes. Um, and being my first time, that's normal. I think I could get it down to around 40 hours, maybe between the two. Um, so it really isn't a viable thing for me to make and sell. But uh, <laughs> they're a lot of fun and really something I want to encourage other people to make. So I wanted to put this video together to show you. It is a little longer than most, um, so if you're not into that, I'm sorry. Um, there is a short form video and I'll leave a link to that over here. But uh, come along and I'll show you exactly what I did to make these. So first off, let's go through building the iron. I started with quarter inch 01 steel uh, by half inch and cut it down to about six inches. In order to make the uh, tip on the iron, I used a red sharpie to mark out what I needed to remove, and that way I could get back to it. This is a piece of sandpaper, two foot wide by 20 foot, and I got it at a resale shop for a buck. Amazing find. Uh, but for this, it actually makes fairly quick work. It was only about 20 minutes of this in order to get the angle down to what I wanted, constantly checking it to make sure it's about 30 degrees. Now I can file off the back. I created the shape I wanted to, just like before, uh, and then took it over to the sheet and ground off more. Second verse, same as the first. This side was a lot easier. It only took me about five minutes to uh, grind it off by hand. Now, hardening is the step that I know probably the least about, and 01 tool steel is oil hardened, and you have to bring it up to a cherry red, but in lit rooms that is often difficult to actually assess. Uh, so I like to use a magnet to actually see where it's at. And I keep going until the magnet is no longer um, attracting the steel. And once that is done and it's reached that temperature, then I know I can go ahead and quench it in the oil. And then of course you get to play with the dust. Next up I need to temper it. Um, I put it in this little oven at 420 degrees. I have a, a specific thermometer to, to check that. And I put it there for about two hours um, and then slowly back it down uh, to uh, over the course of an hour to two hours, I'll bring it back down to room temperature. Then sharpening is just like anything else. Go from your smaller grits to your higher grits and then finish it off on the strop. A uh, very important step just to make sure that everything is uh, perfectly smooth and sharp. So let's get onto the plain body. Uh, this is made of purple heart and ash. They're about seven inches long, and I'm just laying everything out. I'll cut them to length and uh, then cut them to shape. Total thickness is about uh, two inches and about three inches tall. Keep in mind that the ash and purple heart will overlap by about a quarter inch in the tongue and groove section. I love using my bow saws. They have a two TPI, so they make quick work of chewing through large items. Once cut to length, then I can cut the ash to the appropriate thickness. I don't know why, but I kind of enjoy this part. It's kind of meditative, I guess. The purple heart is then matched up to the blanks of ash and cut to width and length very similar to the ash, just more cutting. I like to smooth out the two sides that will meet the ash and purple heart to make sure that they are perfectly smooth and perfectly flat. And that'll give me a good reference to go off of. Now we're going to start with the long grooves in the purple heart. And I make one groove a quarter inch wide, a quarter inch deep, right down the middle of the plank. The depth stop is set on this 45 very, very hard because every cut I need to make has to be to the exact same depth. And so as long as I use one depth stop for every cut, they should all match up. After the first groove, I'll then cut a second groove um, a quarter inch away from the first one, and then a third groove a quarter inch on the other side. So I end up with three grooves that are a quarter inch deep, a quarter inch wide, and each of them a quarter inch apart. 
and I'm being very, very careful to be exactly precise and making sure that all of these are precisely parallel to each other as well. Once I have all three of those grooves cut, then I can move on to the ash and make the matching grooves. These uh, actually line up the purple heart to know exactly where they are on the ash and uh, then make my grooves. The depth stop is still set at the exact same point so that I know that these grooves are precisely the same depth as the ones in the purple heart. This one only gets two grooves down the middle as it only has to fit into the two humps created on the purple heart. Now I get to lay out all of the tongue and groove on the sides of the plane. These are a half inch thick, um, but they also need to go down to the exact same depth as the grooves uh, so that everything will fit together perfectly. Now here you're going to hear me say this a lot through this project. I start by making a stop cut. It's not deep, it's not hard, it's not heavy, it's just a couple light taps. And once I've made the stop cuts all the way around, then I can come back through and remove the waste. All of the chisel work is just removing the waste, and you can't do that until you make the stop cuts. Each pass is only taking it down a sixteenth of an inch or so. Slow and steady wins the race. It is very, very important to be extremely precise. Everything needs to be exactly 90 degrees. Everything needs to go down to the exact same depth all the way around. Each one of these took me about two hours, and since there's four sides for the two planes, I spent about eight hours on this process. So this was probably the most time-consuming step of the entire thing, was shaping all of these grooves. Just more of the same. Make your stop cut, and then remove the waste. Always making sure you're making a precise 90 degree cut down. Now once I made the grooves on the ash, I clamped them together so that I can make all the marks and transfer all the measurements over to the Purple Heart. Trying to undercut just a little bit to try and make them a little bit tight. You can always remove more wood, but you can't always add it. And then the same as the ash, make your stop cuts and then remove the waste. I would love to get a good chisel mallet. I should probably make one of those someday. But for now, I'll just use the kids' mallets. Making sure everything goes down to the exact same depth as the grooves. Stop cut, stop cut, remove the waste. This is actually really enjoyable. Now the glue, fill it in all the nooks and crannies, and then uh, match them up. Now I made these really stinking tight, and uh, because of that I really couldn't just push them together all the way. So what I ended up doing is putting them in the clamp and squeezing them with the clamp, and uh, then I just left them in it overnight. It makes a good, uh, a good finish. I was able to get them completely tight and a uh, really nice seal all the way around at the clamp. Just take it slow and make sure everything fits. Now I have two plane bodies and we need to cut out the space for the iron to go in. The iron is bedded at 45 degrees and so I make the mark where the back of it is and then I'll make a mark on the other side of the iron so that I know how big the mouth and the opening needs to be. And uh, then make all the rest of the marks. It's a three-dimensional marking system on all four sides uh, so that I have an idea of where the inside marks, uh, inside cuts need to be. Take your time, make them right. And now for the boring part. Yeah, it's a lot of this. <laughs> I drill out all the holes just to make it a little easier for removing the waste with the chisel put about a dozen or so holes in the top. Uh, you notice the blue tape on there, it gives me a depth stop. So I know if I go straight down from that point, um, I'm not going to run into anything I need. Uh, it's very careful to make sure that you only, uh, only bore in as far as you absolutely need to. Once all the holes have been drilled and most of the waste is removed, 
you can go in with a chisel and start to remove things. This is probably the second longest process of the whole job, is making sure everything was exact. Uh, and you just end up having to take small, small chunks with every move and make sure you're not taking off too much. Constantly checking your angles, making sure everything's smooth, flattening things out, and uh, moving stuff. Once I got down to the purple heart on the grooves, then I flipped the plane over and came at it from the mouth side, trying to remove the waste from that. And again, it's just slow, slow bits. Just take off a little bit at a time, don't be in a hurry, and you'll end up with a clean process. Rushing work is often the worst. Keeping the chisel flat to the bed, I can make sure I have the exact same angle going all the way down. We want to make sure that the bed for the iron is nice and smooth and flat. So there's the comparison of the steps. Then once it's pretty close to where I want it, I take the file and smooth everything out. This will give you a nice flat surface and a good reference edge for everything else in the future. Now let's work on the wedges. I used a piece of ash that I had, um, a half, an inch and a half wide, and then cut the angle in it. The actual angle I'm using here is one inch to four inches, and I found that to be a really nice, a nice angle for these. Once I cut them down, I'll plane off both sides. Number one, that gets rid of the saw marks, but number two, that also gives you a really sharp edge on the wedge. Now let's work on the body. Uh, you're gonna hear this as well a lot. It's step by step to shape things. Take the chisel and make your large shapes, then bring in your rasp and get your general shape in place. Uh, a file, a fairly rough file to bring things down and get rid of the rasp marks and then you're gonna grab a finer file to get rid of those marks. And I'll usually end up with an extremely fine file that I have that uh, I can pretty much get rid of any mark with. So just slowly making the shape from one tool to the next. It's actually a really enjoyable step when you start to see things come to life like that. Then the top surface, I'll just do the exact same thing. Chisel, rasp, file, fine file, and I'm constantly checking it to make sure it feels good. Uh, from this point on, I'm, I'm putting it in the clamp, I'm working on it, I'll take it out of the clamp and I'll feel it. And that'll tell me where I need to take off more, where I need to adjust things. I'm not going to any particular pattern, I'm just going to, okay, what actually feels good in my hand? This is a little trick I learned a while ago. I used some olive oil on the surface, uh, not as a finish, but it allows me to see what the finish might look like. Uh, it will also will raise the grain a little bit, and I can see if there's any nicks or scratches that need to be filed out. The pin is made from 3 8 brass, and I just cut it to length. I made it a quarter inch longer than the plane is wide, so that it buttons out a little bit on either side. Then just smoothed out either end with a file, and gave it a nice shiny finish. I really do like the brass. Now back to the wedges. Um, same as the body, just shape them with a chisel, ran, go to a rasp, and then end up with a file and a smoother file, rounding the end. Cutting the mouth is the same thing with a chisel. Make a stop cut, remove the waste. Make a stop cut, remove the waste. Kind of sounds boring, but uh, it's a very simple process. You just have to learn how to apply it to different scenarios. Now a lot of people think that carving is something that is wow and crazy and really cool, but it's actually a simple process. You just draw it out with a pencil, you make your stop cuts, and you remove the waste. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, it's the exact same thing. Chisel, knife, I have a carving knife that I use sometimes. I really like using an X-Acto knife, but just make your stop cuts and remove the waste. Um, same thing on the plain body. This image, I actually just used a pencil and freehanded it and uh, used a round piece just to get the general shape. That's why there's a lot of marks that I'm trying to follow. 
but I know which ones I want to follow. Making stop cuts with a knife and then removing the waste. As you get closer to the end, you just make smaller and smaller cuts and remove things less and less. And then here's the part I like, the very last step, putting my maker's mark on it. Made this branding iron a while ago and I love it. To finish it, I just use boiled linseed oil, uh, three or four coats of that, and then a paste wax finish. Give it a nice shine, feels great in the hand, not too slippery, has a good grip. I just really like that on tools. And the test. Cuts like butter. And this is why I do hand tool work. This is fun. It's not about the end goal. It's not about the project, it's about the steps involved and the enjoyment you can have along the way. Yes, we can step back and look at a project and say, wow, that's cool, um, that's a good thing. But when you can look at a project and have the memories of making it and the enjoyment that you had along the way, that, that's the reason I do hand tool woodworking. I have to say, this is probably my favorite project that I've ever completed. They are just a joy to work with and an absolute blast to make. I learned so much on them and it was really kind of fun just seeing how so many different techniques of the carving, the shaping of the body, the cutting out of the tongue and groove, um, so many different things were the exact same process just used a little differently. You know, putting in your, uh, putting in your stop cuts and then removing the waste and putting in your stop cuts and removing the waste. And if you can learn some of those basic skills, things like this are fairly simple. It's just learning to apply them in a slightly different way. It is my goal that you can learn to do something like this. It really isn't as hard as it looks. It is just a simple list of steps that you have to go through. And once you learn one step, you can go on to the next and you can start to learn how these all come together. It is my goal to show people that things that we think are a little out of your reach really aren't. This is something that just about any woodworker can do. And so I kind of want to leave it at that. Um, I hope you like this video. Um, this is a little longer than I normally make. My computer can just barely render this. I'd like to be able to do longer formats in the future. Um, I have about 13 hours worth of footage on building these. and <laughs> I could really go a lot more into depth than some of the details and things like that. But uh, for now, that 15 to 20 minute mark is about all I can put out. So I hope you like this. Uh, please let me know in the comments below if there's something else you'd like to see or something I left a question about. Um, if you like the video, please hit the like button or feel free to subscribe and feel free to check out one of my other videos. You might find something you like. And until next time, have a wonderful day.